Hi everyone, my name is Yulia, I am a former Fulbright Fellow from Ukraine and this is my YouTube channel where I interview Fulbrighters from all over the world. We talk about studying abroad, cultural exchange and the scholarship that made all of this possible. Today I am interviewing Anna. Uh, hi Anna, uh, welcome here, uh, thank you for coming and please introduce yourself. Hey Yulia, hi guys. Um, I come from Ukraine. I started to study counseling psychology here at Western Michigan University in the US uh, in 2016. So now I'm almost done. I'm almost there. Uh, I still have to do my internship, which is kind of a field practicum. And this mm -hmm. is a very interesting part of the program and it's the most exciting for me. Uh, so hopefully I'm going to start just le within less than a month. So I'm very excited. Cool. And uh, what were you doing before Fulbright? What was your life like and how you came up with the idea to go to study abroad? Um, I, I got very interested in the field of psychology, I guess, six years ago. Um, but uh, in Ukraine, uh, it was possible to get very good informal training, informal education. So I got my certification in positive psychotherapy and in gestalt therapy. Um, but I still know that to be a very good practitioner, I need a um, state degree for that. And I started to um, do my re own research on the options and opportunities that I have for that. And it turned out that um, uh, one of the best scholarships that I found that um, could give me an opportunity to study mm -hmm. abroad uh, in the U.S., where the where psychotherapy is uh, much more developed than in Ukraine, uh, was this Fulbright scholarship. Mm. Uh, I was uh, subscribed to this uh, unistudy.org um, mm -hmm. emails. Yep. So that's how I got the information about Fulbright. And I know that I was looking at master's degree and it so in the name it's, it has something to do with like master's degrees in this and this field. I'm like, okay, that's what I need. And I decided to apply. However, 12 years before um, I got really interested in uh, psychology, I used to work um, uh, as one of the leaders in uh, non-governmental mm -hmm. organizations and I used to conduct different kinds of social projects that improved life of people with disabilities mm -hmm. in Ukraine. Um, and why did you get interested in helping people with disabilities in Ukraine? Uh, when I was uh, 15 years old, I got a spinal trauma and uh, I now move in a wheelchair. This is the only way that I can move. Uh, and uh, um, I knew I, I saw how hard it is even just to get out of my own house, mm. which is why I thought that it couldn't hurt uh, to make our lives better and mine too. So uh, first of all, um, it had to do a, a lot with physical mm -hmm. boundaries that we had in Ukraine. We still have a bunch of them, but now the situation is much better than it used to be 17 years ago. Okay, sure. And um, why do you think you were selected for Fulbright? That is a very good question and a very <laughs> I think tough it's a very one. good question for everyone. <laughs> yes. Um, before, as I mentioned, uh, before um, I decided to study psychology, uh, I used to write projects and those were grant projects. Uh -huh. um, and I applied for different donors uh, who were primarily in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and in Canada, which is why I knew exactly um, how important it is to be very precise in the mm -hmm. application. Um, I knew exactly how to set up goals. I mm -hmm. knew that they should be achievable, um, logical. Um, I think a lot of people know this smart analysis, right? Mm -hmm. Like measurable, uh, time oriented, you know, yep. all those things. Yeah. So uh, when I conduct any of the projects, when I do any of the applications, I always considered all of those things. So I guess that's what made the application itself pretty good. Do you feel that your expectations were met uh, when you came here, since you're, you've been here already for two years? And um, let's probably first talk about academical expectations, about your program, about uh, maybe professors or university campus in here. Mm -hmm. In many ways, um, I guess my experience even exceeded my expectations mm -hmm. because campus is wonderful and uh, the school system is very different from what we have in my country. Uh, so that was definitely very refreshing and um, and cool and interesting mm -hmm. and um, I, I mean I love to learn in general but this is you know like going to school is not so much fun usually 
for me, I guess, well, let's be, uh, let's tell the truth to people, right? So it was really fun for the first year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was all new and, uh, you know, but uh, I mean, I, um, unlike other programs, I had to start it during summer. Yeah. So during the whole summer, so I didn't have any brace, breaks. So for those of you guys who consider uh, the field of consultant psychology, you should know that you will have to do a master's degree in two years, and you're gonna have to start like two years straight without any major breaks, except probably for a winter break. And that, that was specifically Fulbright requirement, as I know. So yes, it's yes. Like if you are just an international student, you will have more time, depending on also your stipend, but Fulbright. In Ukraine, they set the requirement that you must finish everything within two calendar years. Yes, uh, which is why this is very intense, mm -hmm. yet very rewarding and interesting. And I like that I have a huge access through the university library to the databases that mm -hmm. include all of those um, uh, psychological articles approved by American psychological mm -hmm. associations. And. What about uh, cultural or personal expectations? Uh, do you feel that life in the United States is exactly you pictured before you came here from, I don't know, movies, media, or, or other stories from other people? That's actually a very good question. I would say that it's not what it looks like in the movies, that's okay. for sure. Maybe if you live in a big city, it, you know, and you, you have also to know that, um, Life in the United States is very different from state to state. So in uh, South Carolina or in, I don't know, California, people are more, I would say, open-minded, they mm -hmm. smile more. And uh, I live in the Midwest, I live in Michigan, and uh, I live in a small town. So this is, you know, this brings in a lot of peculiarities of how yeah, people it are. It definitely does. Yeah. And, um, I never expected that, for example, Americans are so conservative and mm -hmm. so religious. I didn't know okay. at all. I had no clue. What do you mean conservative in terms of what? Uh, you know, when you watch the movies, it looks like, well, um, I don't know, uh, free relationships and everything. Okay. So in and, and I can see how many families are like truly conservative, like, oh, you have to be married, oh, you have to go to church. And uh, I would say that um, uh, it's even more spread than in Ukraine. And I consider mm -hmm. that Ukrainians are pretty religious. I mean, mm -hmm. most of us go to church. Yeah, I agree that sometimes here you get surprised that it still exists, that way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. And what was your first or the biggest cultural shock when you came to the United States? No sidewalks. This town Gosh. has no sidewalks. <laughs> because people don't walk here. Why exactly. would they walk? You just you just need a car. Yep. Yeah, that's a problem of small towns where bad public transportation, no sidewalks, and you need a car to get yourself anywhere. And I have to say that, I mean, I cannot say that um, public transportation is completely bad because, for example, all of the buses are equipped with ramps. So oh, for yeah. me, well, as in a terms wheelchair, of that, yeah, yes, that, for me as a wheelchair great. user, it's very convenient yeah. and very good. It's just they run once an hour or once in 30 minutes. Yeah, so the, that's the, the, what the, is not I, good. I meant more that the routes are like sometimes to get from like one mile distance from the place where you are, you need to take two buses to go like completely opposite way and then go there. But yeah, they're definitely more equipped than in our country, for example, in Ukraine. Yeah, and another big thing for me was that uh, there are no small shops with food, like yeah. with, with real food, not like frozen yogurt or something like that you can cook, mm -hmm. vegetables or, I don't know, fruits, things like that. Some kind of like corner store where you go and get exactly. something that you forgot to for exactly. dinner. Exactly. So yeah. if you forgot yeah. something for dinner, you have no dinner, basically, <laughs> or you need to order takeout. Yeah, yeah, I agree on that too. And um, do you feel that coming here as a Fulbrighter, not as uh, any other international student with any other scholarship or stipend, uh, made a difference, made your experience different than other international students? It's hard for me to compare because I've never been one of the other international oh, students. Sure. But I have to say since Western Michigan University has a huge Fulbright community, you know, like we have about 50 people even more. Yep. 
So this made a huge difference because even before coming here, I knew that people are waiting for us, for us because I'm here with my husband. So um, I knew that uh, I will get help with accommodations and uh, where to live and how to rent and what to do and where to get furniture because we've got the apartment unfurnished. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that you should consider and uh, when there is no one in here, if there was no you guys in here, then it wouldn't be really possible to do what we could do like to rent an apartment and get in furniture and you know get the stuff from walmart and yeah, things like yeah, that like yeah. in just in the first three just days just simply someone ha to have someone that can drive your furniture to your apartment to deliver it yeah is that exactly because driver's license from ukraine it's not valid even for for the first three months like mm -hmm. our our license is valid in illinois for example yep. first three months then you have to reapply but here in michigan this just doesn't work so yeah uh, and you mentioned that you came here with your spouse so uh can you tell more about that what opportunities or what challenges you faced in terms of that uh, I would have to say that um, on the one hand, there's definitely a huge challenge for a couple. Uh, even if you've been known each other for a while, even if you're married, um, coming to the uh, to another country and leaving all your friends and uh, families mm -hmm. and uh, work and things that you used to do, all your routines, leaving that uh, in the country that you're leaving mm. <laughs> that was very hard and uh, i would say that for the spouse that is always even more challenging than for the student in a way uh, because i knew exactly what i'm gonna do here yeah. and uh, uh, my husband now he's doing leather craft things and he is he makes beautiful wallets and bracelets and uh, watch bands and a lot of things i uh, promise to put a link to his facebook page <laughs> down there <laughs> thank you <laughs> So, um, but still he knew that uh, before this starts to work, he, he has to get a job. And uh, it, is, it was very hard for him for the first six months just, you know, to wait for work permission mm. and then to apply for a job. And this is so different from what we have in Ukraine and I think that will be interesting for, you know, for the people who want to come here. Uh, first of all, America has this thing like cover letter and mm -hmm. uh, uh, we don't have that so we had n none of us had a, mm -hmm. even a clue how to do it which is why uh, at first Dima didn't even Dima is my husband he didn't even do it so mm -hmm. he just made um, uh, a resume and that's what he sent out mm -hmm. and uh, later our friends who are Americans they told us that no 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 that's not how things work here first of all you have to call them and mm -hmm. then you meet them and then you send out the resume and cover letter and basically cover letter backs you up on many things and that's what, what they evaluate even more than your resume yeah. um, and then you have to call again and just to make sure if they saw all the documents and stuff like that and you never got get callbacks here <laughs> like <laughs> this is like this was very challenging and very frustrating for him and even though he started to learn English before we came mm -hmm. here like he started to refresh his knowledge because last time he learned it it was in high school mm -hmm. uh, still it was hard and uh, he had a lot of anxiety in terms of how the job interview will go or what should I say or how it should look like mm -hmm. so until we were told certain things about cover letter or how to do the interview I think that actually when we did that right he got a job like in two weeks so it's just certain so things th that, that you, did help a lot. Yes, yes, like that you you kind of must know, mm -hmm. otherwise it's gonna be pretty much impossible to get a job. So um, that was hard, and for me it, it was very kind of. I think I'm, I I mean I think I'm lucky that I have my husband here with me mm -hmm. because I'm not even sure how I would even survive for the first six months because I've had. I, I had to take three classes, which I know for Ukrainians that will definitely sound very weird because like three yeah. classes is like nothing, uh, but uh, you have a lot of stuff to do on your own here. Mm -hmm. So if you do everything that was told, you don't even have weekends basically. Yeah. 
so I didn't have an opportunity to cook to clean I just I, I just started and I came home and I fell asleep and, and without he, having a car in here even exactly doing grocery shopping may take half of the day so exactly uh, so yeah that was very challenging for me and uh, if it wasn't for my husband's help I'm not sure how I would have survived that period of time like first six months so I'm guessing that you never considered coming here by yourself uh, now that I know how things work here maybe I would do it but for the very first time on my own I don't think so because I know my limitations and mm -hmm. I'm a wheelchair user right mm -hmm. so that would be my biggest concern mm -hmm. because even in the community that we live now uh, our apartment is not completely accessible mm -hmm. which means uh, sometimes I really need Dima's help mm -hmm. so I see and well I also partially asked this question because I know that Anna traveled a lot by herself before so yeah that's something that really amazed me so tell us where you traveled before um I've been to uh, Poland Germany Sweden Czech Republic Egypt Turkey um, is there anything else I think that's that's it but you know going for vacation yeah, of course or if I go for some kind of a training or seminar mm -hmm. or something I always put down the information that I'm a wheelchair user mm -hmm. so please during this one or two weeks and even if something is not convenient enough one or two weeks weeks that you can survive yeah but here the program was for two years so that yeah, is very yeah. different this is different of course and well talking about traveling and countries uh, what can you say about your home country about Ukraine uh, why would people want to go there like for traveling studies work I mean in different for different reasons very beautiful nature mm -hmm. very beautiful main river Dnieper um, very beautiful Black Sea in Odessa mm -hmm. that's one of the cities um, very interesting culture and traditions and super good food that's actually what i miss in here because <laughs> ukrainian food is it's very complicated so it takes you a whole lot of time to cook those things which is why usually even even back home you just go to the restaurant or you wait till your mom cooks that mm -hmm. so here there are certain things like golubci something that i don't cook at all just because it will take like the whole day yeah yeah and uh for those who would like to travel to Ukraine, uh, what are the five places that you would recommend to go? Uh, I would say definitely Kyiv, which is the capital. Mm -hmm. uh, Odessa, I've mentioned mm -hmm. this city. It's very, very, very interesting and really beautiful and really bright. And bright colors is what I actually miss here in the Midwest because all of the buildings are like, you know, uh, red brick color or gray color or uh -huh. like sand color. I don't know, but sand color is the prettiest I guess <laughs> out of all that they have here. Um, Lviv, which is considered to be a cultural capital of Ukraine, mm -hmm. it's in western Ukraine. Uh, probably Kamyonets Podilsky, that mm -hmm. is a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, um, uh, it's like when you're walking down the street there, it's like you're in the 13th or 14th century, like the bricks, and um, the fortress and all nice. those things like castles uh -huh. it's very very beautiful and I think that's four right yep yeah one that, more. that's four and one more um, maybe Vinitsa mm -hmm. which is really really beautiful mm -hmm. and very well developed and it's like super super nice and super cool city okay well thank you for the tips and um, well, the last and I guess my favorite question is uh, what is the most uh, traditional uh, Ukrainian dish that you would recommend someone to try? Just one? You can go crazy and talk that about is hard. <laughs> many uh, dishes, pastries, um, drinks, I don't know. I know that even Ukrainians uh, sometimes consider holodets like meat jello to be a weird <laughs> thing and I know that here people just freak out when they hear that like jello is it sweet is it no it's not sweet it's like it's like a cold soup that um, that I mean that is 
cold enough that you can actually cut it into you know pieces and that is very interesting and very mm -hmm. tasty not gross guys no no very good <laughs> not at all. yeah very good but uh, i guess the most traditional that you think of when you talk about ukraine is uh, salo which is pork fat yep. yeah which might be very fresh and salty and it's it's super nice very flavored Thank you, Anna, for coming and uh, sharing your experience. Thank uh, you for inviting me. <laughs> uh, and uh, if you have any uh, questions to Anna or me, please leave your uh, questions and comments to this video. I will also link Anna's Facebook page in the description to this video. Uh, if you like this video, please let us know by hitting the like button. Uh, to make sure that you won't miss uh, new videos and get the most recent updates, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and my Instagram that you also can find in the description to this video. And I will also uh, really appreciate your opinion uh, on uh, what else you would like to hear in these interviews. Uh, so, uh, thank you Anna again and see you guys in the next videos. See you.